This video is to give you some information about the recently published Charities Amendment Bill 2023. The bill was introduced into the Dáil by Minister of State Joe O'Brien in late January. It heralds a new era in charity legislation. The current Act, the Charities Act 2009, came into force in 2014, which means that this has been our principal piece of legislation in the charity sector for just coming up to 10 years now. In 2021 and 2022, a lot of work was done and in mid-2022, the Charities Amendment Heads of Bill was published. Some of you will have seen the collaborative submission made by The Wheel, Charities Institute Ireland, and ourselves at Mason, Hayes & Curran, which made a lot of commentary about the initially published Heads of Bill. We're very pleased to see that many of our comments and queries have been taken on board in the recently published Bill. So, what's most interesting for charities to think about are the headline issues, those contents of the new bill which will most affect your operational life as a charity in Ireland. I'm going to run through some highlights, but there are a lot of content in this bill running to well over 100 pages, so I would encourage you to keep up to date with the updates from Mason, Hayes and Curran as the bill progresses along through the Houses of the Oireachtas before it becomes an Act. The first point of note that I want to mention is that the advancement of human rights is now going to become a charitable purpose. This means a whole new world of regulation and scrutiny for organisations who have as their main purpose advancement of human rights. They're going to become charities just in the way that any of the other common or garden charities of Ireland are currently recognised and they'll be regulated in exactly the same way. Human rights organisations will have a period of six months or such longer period as the Minister may prescribe to register once the bill becomes an act. Another very welcome addition is that the role of the company secretary in a charity has now been recognised so that if you are a company secretary but not holding the role of a director, you will not be given all of the onerous obligations of charity trusteeship. This was an anomaly under our present act and it's very good to see it corrected in the new bill. Another new obligation is that charities which are not companies are, for the first time, going to be required to keep a register of members. One development which we discussed a lot when the bill was at heads of bill stage was the requirement to report a significant event to the charities regulator. This provision has been amended between the heads and the recently published bill and the situation as it presently stands is that reporting of significant events is going to be fleshed out by the charities regulator by way of guidelines rather than being a mandatory obligation in the Act itself. This is a very welcome addition and reflects the position as it is under the Charity Commission of England and Wales. We have also seen the long-awaited introduction of the financial reporting standards within the new Bill. The bill introduces the long-awaited requirement for SORP accounting for large charities. For smaller charities, the income and expenditure threshold has increased from 100,000 to 250,000 euro, which is a welcome change. One issue where charities frequently come to us at Mason, Hayes and Curran is where they're proposing to make a change to their constitutional documentation. In the original published Heads of Bill, there was a proposal that any constitutional change would have to await the prior written approval of the Charities Regulator. We were glad to see that the newly published Bill amends this requirement so that the Charities Regulator advance approval will apply only to changes to a charity's objects clause or to their standard charitable clauses in their constitution. For education bodies, including our schools, Many changes are introduced in the Bill and we would encourage you to follow these closely. They will be explained in full in a forthcoming Mason, Hayes and Curran e -zine. In terms of the next steps for the Bill, we are awaiting its passage through the Houses of the Oireachtas. The Bill is dense at 138 pages and difficult to read because it's an amending Bill of the Charities Act 2009. The Mason, Hayes and Curran Charities team have done an informal consolidation for ease of readability and please do get in touch if you'd like to have a copy of this. We will continue to keep you informed and will watch with interest the passage of this important piece of legislation through the Oireachtas. <laughs>